camera change to photo mode. Camera change to video mode. Camera change to photo mode. Camera change to video mode. Video recording started. Video recording stopped. Video recording started. Video recording stopped. Camera change to photo mode. Photo taken. Photo taken. Photo taken. Camera change to video mode. Video recording started. X shot change to neutral mode. X shot change to default mode. X shot change to POI targeting. X shot change to default mode. X shot change to neutral mode. X shot change to default mode. Video recording stopped. Camera change to photo mode. Hi folks, so welcome to this next video on the muffling for OpenTX and HTX project and the latest and greatest addition you just have seen in the introduction uh, part, namely a touchscreen support for your Lua widgets. And this has been done on HTX firmware. However, I'd like to point out uh, that the same what you have seen works also for OpenTX. So I will also provide an OpenTX firmware where you can use this uh, Lua widget uh, telemetry script that you just have seen. However, since uh, this was done now here on HTX, I will refer to HTX uh, only in this video. Now concerning the code additions which are needed to get all this muffling and lure widget stuff, um, these can be broadly classified into two categories which I've called the core functions and the interactive lure widgets functions. And the code additions or code changes for the first part, the core functions, this is really what you need to get all this muffling stuff. Uh, up and running. And so this goes deeply into the code structure and adds what is needed here. And uh, this part is continuously evolving and developing and I will show you in this video the latest state uh, and of, of the situation here. However, it's also very mature, robust and reliable. So in fact, I have not heard anyone complaining that this would give issues or produce uh, malfunctions or whatever. Right. So this is mature, robust and reliable. And this is not very much, uh, not so surprising because the code parts which are affected for this are basically exactly identical for OpenTX and HTX. So, and I'm using this since long and continuously for uh, with OpenTX. So it's not surprising that this should be uh, reliable, right? And one just needs to carry it over to HTX and I actually done this. So it's provided and it's available and everyone uh, can use that. Um, now concerning this, uh, the second part, the interactive fluid widgets stuff. So this is clearly entirely and purely experimental. And uh, this is so that, I mean, HTX brings touchscreen support to you. However, it has not yet an established or working or finalized or, or concept uh, and, and the code uh, structures uh, for how to do this interactive lure widgets with keys and uh, touchscreen support and, and all, all this stuff. So I, I guess this will need quite some more time of development to, to, to bring this to, to full uh, potential and full life, right? So what's possible with what I have done, you have seen in the introduction. Um, but because of, of this uh, status, I will not continue to talk about this part here. I will now in this video remainder of this briefly guide you through uh, what's the latest date concerning the core functions. Okay, so let me go through this core functionalities as I've called them. And much of them, if not all of them, you probably might have seen in earlier videos. And in fact, not much has changed here. Um, except that I did some uh, adjustments to the interface to make it more usable, hopefully more flexible and so on and so forth. Um, so in this sense, you, you probably could say, okay, it's the same except of some cosmetic changes. And of course, the big uh, change here is that this is now on HTX. 
So all the previous videos had been on OpenTX. So what this demonstrates that all this is working properly and fine also on HTX. Now the first set of uh, settings are found here in the systems menu in this radio setup uh, page. And when you scroll down here, you find now a new setting serials or new area serials where I have collected both the USB and CL port settings. And the CL port settings uh, formerly were located here in the hardware page, but they have become so flexible and universal in some sense now and so uh, similar uh, between USB and CL ports that it just doesn't make sense anymore to me to have them in this uh, yeah, hardware page. So I collected them here. And indeed, uh, when you go now to the USB mode, for example, uh, you can find now this usual option and in addition now this muffling option. So this is actually what you would expect to see, but this was not available before. Um, so this makes it now very yeah, streamlines now USB and CL ports, right? So usually I like to use this ask option. Now for the CL ports, it's the same options as before uh, on OpenTX. Uh, so you have your all, oh, sorry, all these things and among them also this muffling setting. Um, so this is all what is found in this uh, systems menu. So the other part of the settings are found in the model setup page. So when you scroll down here, um, you find now, uh, you find this external RF uh, area where you can see that you have now this option muffling, right? And this is really related to this uh, possibility to have full bidirection muffling uh, communication through the transmitter bay here using this hardware. And this here is obviously a test setup. So I'm recording this here on a bench. So usually I would use this module here, which has the same hardware inside plus this 3DR telemetry unit uh, to have this muffling connection to my uh, copter. And so this is really a feature I like a lot and use all the time and would not want to miss it anymore. When you scroll down further, you find here this muffling area where you have the possibilities to adjust the behavior of your ISSI uh, handling. Then there's also the sensor mimicry uh, option, which is actually probably useful and important. So I will come back to this in a second. And then there is this RC override option. And this allows you to send the stick positions uh, by muffling messages to your copter. And uh, the new feature here is that you can choose now the frequency. Uh, with which you want to send these messages. And this is actually an important uh, possibility because sending this RC override messages can uh, quite swamp your telemetry link. And uh, so you really want to choose just the right frequency which you need for your application to not uh, yeah, burden your telemetry link too much with nonsense, right? So usually I don't use it, so I set it to off. Now, so these are already all the settings uh, which are available. Another integral feature of this core functionality is, of course, the muffling router. That is the possibility to have a muffling communication among several ports. So one port is here via this transmitter bay. Uh, so you can communicate here through this AUX ports and also through this uh, USB port. And this is what I briefly want to demonstrate to you. So I connect here via USB. Then because I had this USB, mode ask option uh, you get this, uh, this this list here and indeed you find here now this possibility to have it muffling communication so we select this and then we can connect uh, to our flight controller uh, by muffling uh, so the communication goes now through muffling uh, through this usb port through this transmitter to this telemetry link to my flight controller so this is this muffling. Okay, so now we are connected. So we can see it. Everything is working like it would. And uh, and when we disconnect here, right, then of course this uh, connection is uh, is lost. So this is the muffling router and uh, this, this set of core functionalities. But at this point you might ask, well, okay, what is all this good for? I have not seen any single data value or whatever, right? And this is where this sensor mimicry comes in. 
namely when you have this enabled, what it does is that it translates the data from the incoming muffling messages into ordinary telemetry items. So when you go here to the telemetry page and you discover you have discovered uh, your telemetry, right? Then you see that you get this list of telemetry items, which uh, where, where all the data is coming in, right? And this you can use like you would use it with ordinary free sky telemetry or crossfire telemetry or whatever else. So this behaves like ordinary telemetry items. So for example, what you can do when you go into here, um, we set up here, we select here a widget. Uh, so we select here a value widget. Uh, and then we go into here, um, widget settings, then here what value we want to sh show. And here you find now all possible values and among them, of course, these telemetry items, which reflect the muffling data. Uh, so this is a, it's a simple way to get access to this muffling data. And you really, as I said, I mean, you really can use this like any other, like you would use it in any other application. Uh, what you, uh, yeah. So you see now that here we have now here this heading setting uh, available. Now another possibility is to use the modified Yahoo script of Risto. So he, uh, what he has done is uh, he modified Yahoo's telemetry script so that it can work with this uh, interface provided by this core functionalities. And this is just a demonstration um, here. Um, so he has sent me a video and I just let it run so that you can see this. Uh, so this is just using the core functionalities. I mean, as I have uh, maybe brought out earlier is that when we do, do not have this um, interactive lures widget features, implemented when my telemetry script would not work because it is based on it. Uh, but with just this core functionalities, you can use the sensor mimicry and here this modified Yapu telemetry script. And it should be actually not difficult to modify other telemetry script to use this uh, muffling data. Yeah, so you might say, hey, great and fantastic and lovely and whatever, right? Um, but you might also wonder why is it that this code is not just being taken and integrated by the project maintainers into HTX or OpenTX? And uh, this is actually a good question and it's also a valid question, but it's maybe a bit of a delicate question. So um, on the one hand, uh, it is absolutely true that the code is available, it's working, and you could integrate it just with a press of a button. Right. I mean, maybe I mean you want to do some cosmetic changes to it and so on and forth, and, and but this would be easy to do and would not be a blocker or something like that, right? So um, you this could be merged with just a, a press of a button and brought to you uh, the users. Um, however, I mean code is a bit like uh, hardware. So I mean when you have here this transmitter, right? And for you as a user, all what matters how it feels and behaves from the outside. Right? How the sticks feel, how the functions are, and that it feels solid and robust, and, 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 and so on and so forth. However, when you would open the box and would look inside the box, you might well find hardware solutions which you don't like so much. Right? So uh, that's what I try to bring out. That, that It's the same thing with code. I mean, when you have a piece of code, then all what matters to the user is that the code is working, that it's not crashing, that it has no bugs, that it just does what it's supposed to do, right? But when you look inside the code, one can indeed find what one could call the code architecture or the code design or the code structure or whatever. And concerning this code uh, itself, one can be of different opinions. Right? One can achieve one and the same uh, external behavior outside looking face, so to say, with different code solutions. And what I have certainly done is that I took the code as it is and built this, added this stuff on top of it. 
so I was certainly not completely redesigning the code in order to make it nicer or something like this. And now concerning the um, all this USB and telemetry and uh, seals and UART handling, one indeed can be of the opinion that the code structure as it is right now in HTX and OpenTX is not very nice. So it's a bit, yeah, it's not very nice. Okay, so one might want to improve it, one might want to redesign this code things. It would not change the functionality at all, but it would make it a nicer code. And this is at least my understanding what this project maintainers of HTX wants want to do with the first want to redesign all this USB, UART and serial handling um, um, to make it a proper code structure and then hopefully maybe uh, this muffling stuff will be also uh, eventually coming to you. So I thought that I should uh, comment on this because on the one hand it's it's absolutely true that this could be merged just uh, today and uh, it's available, I've PR'd it, um, but I also wanted to uh, bring across uh, that uh, from the developer, code develop developer side there can be also rational reasons for why one maybe does not want to do that. Okay, so as usual thank you for your attention and bye bye.